Well, brothers and sisters out on the internet, uh, brothers here around the table, you know, welcome. It's good to be back. Uh, we were off last week. I had to take some time to, you know, vacation with the children and, you know, do what we love to do. We, we love camping and uh, it gave me an opportunity really to, um, while they were swimming, to read, you know, on the side of the pool and, and really uh, seek what the Lord has um, for me and, and, and my children. So praise God for that. Um, amen, amen. So, um, but also the last two weeks was a um, a period of of really reflecting on uh, some some what I would consider some real key issues. Uh, uh, just in 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 the past few weeks, we're talking about um, or, or just being faced with in my own life and in uh, brothers and sisters' lives that that I minister to. Uh, challenges in obedience and, and, and faithfulness. So tonight's message uh, that we're going to speak about tonight is the true measure. Uh, what's the true measure of our faithfulness and our obedience? Amen? Amen. Keith Hart, how you doing, brother? Bless you, man. Welcome. Hey, Keith. Amen. Amen. So uh, those of you on the internet, uh, we are going to be starting tonight uh, our foundational scripture for tonight's study is first kings chapter two verse three all right so let me go ahead like we do every week let me, let's open up in prayer um and then uh, we'll move on with the study heavenly father we thank you we thank you lord for uh we thank you father for for peace yes we thank you for comfort yes. we thank you for the deliverance of our souls father we thank you for uh, showing us the way, Father. We thank you for covering us and protecting us along that way. Yes. Father. We thank you for your challenges to, to be courageous, Father, in the stances that we take in our lives. Yes. Father God, we thank you for those that uh, may need a hand up in, in that courage, that there are brothers and sisters around them that are that are ready and able and capable of, of girding them up, Father. And we just thank you for those souls, Father. We ask you to bless them mightily, Father. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to uh, to speak your word tonight. We thank you yes, for um, just the uh, the sharpness of your word, the blessing of your word, the challenge of your word, uh, the comfort and peace of your word, Father. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you, Lord, for our health. We thank you for the provision that you have provided us during this time that we've been away, Father. Thank you. For you provide that provision every waking moment of our day. We thank you, Lord. We praise you on high, Father. And we're just praying to you, Father, today in hopes that, Father God, that you will, uh, that you will uh, manifest yourself right now uh, in this room, Father. I just pray in, in your son's name, Father, that you will help me die to self, Father, that, that there is no fabric of me in this message, Father. I just only wish to be obedient to, to deliver uh, your word and only your word, Father. Take away any pridefulness from me, Father. Take away from any kind of haughtiness or anything of self and se or selfishness from me in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Father, I only wish to be obedient, and I only wish for Father to be a humble before you, Father. I thank you again, Father, for all that you have done for this ministry. I thank you, yes. Father God, for all the all that you have done for the brothers in this ministry. For you are faithful. You have brought jobs, Father. You have brought yes. houses, Father. You have, yes. brought, you have brought automobiles to this ministry, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, thank Father you. God. So, Father, we honor you. And as always, Father, we're just praying unto you in your blessed Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be, be on your, your guard. guard. Stand, Stand firm in the faith. faith. Be, be men of courage. courage. Be, be strong. strong. Do, Do everything, everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be on your guard. Stand firm in faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Wow. Well, as I mentioned, uh, tonight's study is uh, titled The True Measure of Our Faithfulness and Obedience. Uh, we're coming out of the book of 1 Kings, uh, chapter 2 and verse 3. I'm going to read uh, this from the uh, New Living Translation, and the Word of God uh, reads, Observe the requirements of the Lord your God, and follow all His ways. 
Keep the decrees, the commandments, the regulations, the, and the laws written in the law of Moses so that you will become successful in all you do and wherever you go. You go. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and, and sisters, the theme of tonight is obedience and faithfulness. Amen? Amen. So what got me on this road, brothers, is also, as I read a quote recently, uh, maybe about a month ago, and I've just been really digging deep and thinking about it. It was a quote actually from Mother Teresa of, of Calcutta. And the quote, the quote that I read says that uh, God doesn't require us to succeed. He only requires you to try. Let me say that again. God doesn't require us to succeed. He only requires us to try. Amen? Amen. So also, so just in thinking about that, God has a way of, you know, at least in my life, and I'm sure others' lives out there as well, is, is you know, bringing up confirmations around you and, and things around you, circumstances around you, either in your life or in other people's lives uh, that you're close to. And... Um, so the same for me in this in this season. God placed in front of me, you know, many ministry related situations and some circumstances that um, where I had to share the word of the Lord with some brothers and sisters, uh, strictly from this verse, you know, strictly from this verse, and 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 to to remind them that they are to observe the word of the Lord. Okay, they are to observe the requirements, I mean, of the Lord, of their God, and follow Him in all His ways. Okay, so that means that we're to follow Him in our homes that way. We are to follow Him uh, with our wives that way. We are to follow Him with our husbands that way. We are to follow Him with our children that way. That in all His ways we are to follow. Amen? Amen. So, you know, brothers and sisters, and, and look, think about it. Even brothers and sisters we talk to in and out of Christ, okay, we are to follow all his ways. Amen? Amen. Okay? So the Word of God says, you know, that, that's, that's exactly what the Word of God says. So but the question is, are you following all of his ways? Are you? Or are you taking a, what I had to question myself is, or are you taking a self-serving hybrid approach <laughs> to the word of God? You know, um, you know, you know, are you saying to yourself, well, I know the word of God says this, yes. and, and I know it says what I should do is this in this situation, but I got it. <laughs> That's right. I got it. I'll just tweak the situation. I'll just bend it. Bend it. Mm -hmm. I'll just, you know, tweak my circumstance to suit my needs. Oh, also, also, get this. I can do it when I want to suit in my fears oh. or I can do it when I want to tweak and suit my concerns being anxious obedience and faithfulness to the word of God I mean the total word of God is the key it is the key to our success it is, it is the only measure. Our focus, thus, our obedience and faithfulness, faithfulness must be on what God says in that very situation that you're facing, in that very circumstance that you're facing. Amen? Amen. And we must trust in that situation. We must trust him that he will take care of the consequences. Amen. Amen? Amen. So he's asking for us to do what? To stand in his word 
and trust that even if you have to face a difficult situation, even if you have to face a difficult person, even if you have to confront your wife, confront a disobedient uh, child, that stand firm on his word and let him take care of the consequences. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I got a question. Would you rather disappoint your child, your wife, your friend or the almighty God. Brothers and sisters, we must stand in our faith. We must stand on his word. And I promise you that if you will, I promise you that he will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will lift you out of that horrible pit. The word Psalm 40 says, he will lift you out of that horrible pit and he will set your feet on that rock and he will establish your steps in your relationship. He'll establish your steps in your marriage. He'll establish your steps with your children. Amen. Amen. All he requires to do all of that is obedience and faithfulness. And if you give him that in due season, he will honor our prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as in it says in, in, in the word of God, in first, go back to 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3, when your child is being disobedient, go to the word of God and follow all his ways. Amen? Amen. When we are dealing with a disobedient wife or a husband, that is not acting in the spirit of Christ. Go to the word of God and follow all his ways. For your purpose and God's instruction is there in you, brothers and sisters, a stance. Is there in you a choice, a will to choose to trust our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and follow all his ways. If so, scripture assures us in 1 Kings 2 and 3, you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. You go. Amen? Amen. Amen. So another question. Do you see yourself as being successful in God's eyes? In God's eyes, do you see yourself being successful? Amen? So, brothers and sisters, let us start this journey by first asking, what is success? Ah. Amen? Amen? So, let, let us, you know, most people in and out of the kingdom, by the way, this is not a secular view. Right. Amen? Amen. All right? So, most people, okay, define success in terms of achieving goals, acquiring wealth, having prestige, favor, status, and power. Successful people enjoy the good life. Amen? Amen. Being financially secure, emotionally secure, being surrounded by admirers, enjoying the fruits of their labor. Their example is talked about. It's emulated. Their accomplishments are noticed. They're shown on TV, on the, new, in the newspapers. Most people's definition of success only deal with the here and now, brothers and sisters. Here and now of this life, I should remind you. There's another life on the other side Amen. called glory. Amen? Amen. Even in many of our churches today, brothers and sisters, okay, you know, the definition of success is measured in terms of congregational numbers, the size of the sanctuary buildings, the offering dollars taken into the, into the church during the, the tithes and offerings, and, oh, by the way, the prestige and notoriety of the pastor. Amen? Amen? But I personally would offer 
to all of you that I believe success is measured and defined differently by our Lord God himself. Amen? Amen. 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 So brothers and sis sisters, God measures, his measure of success involves our obedience and faithfulness to him. Regardless of opposition that you may face, regardless of the persecution you may face, regardless of your labor, regardless of your toil, regardless of your personal cost, his measure of success is whether or not we are being loyal to him. Amen? Amen. He, whether we're being loyal in our personal relationship with him in our entire life. Amen? Whether or not we are accomplishing his goals for his purposes in the life that, oh, by the way, he set out for us. Amen. Amen? So let us take a journey because I wanted to do some homework on this issue. So bear with me as I take us on a journey through the Bible, and, and let's see what the Bible says about success, amen? So let's go back to the king, the, the, the book of Kings, the first Kings, because in this book, what, what, what the scripture is talking about is King David himself was about to die. He, was, he gave his son Solomon in this scripture the following advice. In verse 3, it goes back and says, Observe the requirements of the Lord God, my son, you can hear him saying, and follow all his ways. Keep the decrees and the commands and the regulations and the laws written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go, my son. You can hear him say it. Now, Brothers and sisters, notice that David did not tell his son to build up his kingdom. He didn't tell him to build up great armies. He didn't tell him to gather up wealth. He didn't tell him to defeat his enemies in battle. Instead, his formula for success given to his son was to tell his son to follow God and to obey God, amen? amen? So when Solomon became king, he didn't ask the Lord for wealth. We all know the story. He didn't ask the Lord for power. We all know the story, right? Y'all don't get this, y'all don't get this. We all know the story, right? What did he ask for, huh? He asked for wisdom and discernment in order to lead his people and God, therefore, God's people. Amen? Amen. God was pleased, as we know, y'all don't, y'all ain't getting this. <laughs> God was pleased with his request. Very pleased. And he granted it. He gave Solomon the wisdom and what an understanding and perceiving heart. more than any man prior to him. He also gave Solomon the things that he didn't ask for. Amen. Remember, Solomon was the richest, richest. king ever. Yeah. He didn't ask for wealth, though, but the Lord blessed him Stay because with. what? He didn't ask for it. Right. He kept his eye on serving what? God. God blessed him. That's something we can learn. See, y'all ain't getting this. We can learn from this story. Y'all ain't getting this. Amen? Amen. Faithfulness and obedience, right? What did Solomon become? The richest king, the wisest king, the most discerning king ever. Amen? Praise God. Amen. So you think about all of this was, was stated in 1 Kings chapter mm -hmm. 3, verses 1 through 14. You don't, you, you don't, as they say, you don't believe me, read it for yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Solomon took his father's advice to heart. Amen. Okay. At least for the most of his reign, because we know, we know the full story. There was some peaks and valleys there, as we all have in our own lives, right? But again, we can learn something from this, right? Amen. Okay. You know, and, and you think about it, he, you know, I believe he even reflected on it. And it's clear he reflected on it if you then move to the book, to the book of Proverbs. Because in Proverbs chapter 3, 
verses 1 through 4. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. Y'all got to forgive me now because, you know, I had two weeks vacation. So I'm feeling energized again. <laughs> so, Lord, thank Amen. you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. So, you know, we're again, we're going to Proverbs 3 and 1 and 4. And uh, the word of the Lord says, My son, do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments for the length of days and years of your life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, the word says. Write them on a tablet of your heart, the word says, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of of who? God. And he says, man. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Amen. Find favor in the eyes of God. So let us look. You know, we're, we're still on this journey. Y'all with me? Y'all with me out there? Amen. We're still on this journey. Let us look at some of the other examples in the Bible. You know, our brother Jeremiah was, an, uh, you know, by measure of man was an absolute failure when judged by man's definition. Amen? For 40 years, if we remember the book of Jeremiah, for 40 years he served as God's spokesman. But when he spoke, no one listened. No one even responded. He was rejected by his neighbors. He was rejected by his family. The priests and prophets and friends, his audiences, and the kin's kings rejected him. He was poor. He underwent severe uh, deprivation. All that to deliver God's message. He was faithful and obedient. He was thrown into prison. He was thrown into a cistern. Oh, by the way, a cistern is like a place where they threw all the sewage. But in God's eyes, he was a success. He was faithful and courageous. He proclaimed God's word and all of God's messages. He was obedient to his calling. God tapped him on the shoulder and he stood firm to honor God. Amen? Amen. So, <laughs> so, again, back to measure. If we measure his life here on earth by people's, by people on earth's measure, then Jesus Christ himself was a failure. <laughs> you know, he had little to no material possessions. You know, brother didn't even own a house. He was rejected by most people. He was even hated by some. Amen. He was rejected by most people. He was even hated by some. The religious leaders of that time despised him. They were jealous of him. They plotted against him. Even his friends and those closest to him deserted him. Sound familiar? He was accused of and found guilty of things that he did not do. He was beaten, Persecuted. he was spat upon, he was cursed, he was even mocked. And he suffered, as we all know, a terrible and horrifying death. And in, in, in those times, it was the most horrifying death that you could suffer, a death on the cross in these times. Okay? So, again, by the measure of man, hmm. by the measure of today's man, that death on the cross and all that he undertook still meant that he was a failure. But in God's eyes, God's eyes, the redemption and the salvation and of all of us of all mankind was accomplished through his son, Jesus. By God's grace and, and, and great love for, 
for you and for I. He sent his only begotten son, his only son, to pay for our sins. And now we have what? We have the gift of restoration. We got the gift of an intimate and personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have eternal life. Eternal life. All because of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 God's standard, brothers and sisters, is faithfulness. That's a standard. That's a standard by which we must live every moment of our life. Let us not fail. To most of us, and, and let me actually think, even let's let's talk about for most of us that are married, because we've got a lot of brothers that are online here around the country, a lot of sisters online around the country that are married. Well, we understand, you know, those that are married and those of us that used to be married understand that the foundation, the fundamental foundation of every marriage is faithfulness. Amen? Amen. This is not just part of God's word. Even secular marriage counselors will tell you that the fastest way to destroy any marriage is to be unfaithful to your spouse. Amen? Amen. But did you know that even more important to, to being faithful to your spouse, more important is to be faithful to your God. It is more important to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of all glory, than it is to be faithful to your mate. Amen? Amen. As, think of, and look, let me not miss this. As, as, as important it is, as it is to be faithful to your mate, we must be more faithful and be willing to stand and be more faithful to our God and to the Word of God when we know, and particularly if our husband or our wife is in a season of disobedience and not in the spirit. We must stand on the word of God and we gotta trust him that he will deliver us through that circumstance because he is faithful when we are faithful to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So again, let me let me lay out a scripture to you. Let us all go to the first Corinthians chapter four and verse two. First Corinthians Chapter 4 and verse 2. Say amen when you get there. Okay? Here's the word of the Lord, brothers and sisters. Verse 2 says, Moreover, and I'm going to read from the Amplified. It says, Moreover, it is essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful providing himself worthy of trust. Now, if we look at the Greek translation, the translation that, that, that we could translate, and I want to focus on the word moreover. The Greek translation for moreover is above all or above everything. Even one of those will work. So you can essentially take this scripture and read it to say, uh, say above everything it is required in stewards that's us by the way that a man be found faithful it is required in, in, in servants of God okay those whom the gospel has been entrusted those of us that it's been entrusted with those of us who are God's children those of us that are God's people above everything else God requires faithfulness. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, mm. if you were to call me, and you're more than welcome to call me or email me, if you were to ask me today, what does God expect of my life? I would simply say, the best answer that I could say is that he would expect and require your obedience and faithfulness. No matter what else you may do, brothers and sisters, God expects for you to be obedient 
and faithful. Amen? Amen. God requires you always to be obedient and faithful. It doesn't say in the scripture, it doesn't say anywhere that is required for any of God's servants, any of us, that we should be successful or popular or educated or attractive or gifted or talented. It doesn't say any of that that we are required to do. It just says that it is required of God's servants that they be found obedient and faithful. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, let me remind you again. Let me, you know, I just, I, I, I will tell you that if you are, and I promise you this, if you, if you are obedient and faithful to your God, your life will be blessed. Your life will be filled with joy and fulfillment and peace, and your life will be filled with satisfaction of achievement. And if you are not obedient, if you are not faithful to your God, you will never, you can never know those things in full measure in your life. Never. Not in full measure. Key. Full measure. Amen? Amen. Okay, no matter how hard you work, no matter how educated you are, or how much experience you have, or how much knowledge of Scripture and the Word of God you have, no matter how gifted you are, without obedience and faithfulness, you will never know, never know the blessing of God upon your life. Never. Amen. So let us let us journey back to God's view. Okay? Remember our success is based on the our God given task. It's the significance of the task that He gives us. Amen. Not that we give ourselves. It is not based on any material material rewards in God's eyes, right? We, 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 we know that. So remember, in this world where success is, is measured by uh, another measurement of salary. Okay, hey, I make six figures. You know, I make 400K, 300K, 200K, whatever. It is important for us to remember that a job does not always reflect, okay? It doesn't, not, does not always, it does not reflect at all in God's mind, in his heart, in his desires. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter, my lady. It doesn't matter, amen? Your value. That's right, that's right. So I wanted to give an example because many people, you know, in ministry, myself and others that I know, you know, our volunteers, you know, that are, are, you know, even those that are employed in ministry are severely underpaid, are severely underpaid, okay? They're, I know folks that are struggling, they're serving the Lord, but they're struggling to make, and they're gainfully employed, but they're struggling to make their bills. And they, they, they don't live, you know, high on the hog at all, you know? You know, we look at a life of, you know, every day we can walk by a newsstand, Oh, and nowadays, I guess we cruise, I'm showing my age, we can cruise the, the internet and, and magazines, you know, internet magazines and those sorts of things. You know, they routinely report, okay, you know, how uh, LeBron, or, you know, the, all the sports stars, you know, or entertainment stars. You know, I just read something the other day, Michael, Michael Jackson's estate, you know, and, 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 you know, it's worth, you know, billions and, and but these folks make significantly more, okay, than teachers, doctors, you know, um, you know, researchers that are researching for cures for cancer, you know, but I'd be willing to bet that no one here tonight would question that what they're doing, okay, isn't a more significant task than any sports star or any entertainment figure. Amen? Amen. Amen. So think about this. Jesus did not have a tax bracket. He didn't. You know, yet 
<laughs> he didn't have a tax bracket, you know. He, uh, I'm in the upper sixes, you know. No, <laughs> he didn't have a tax bracket, you know. Yet, without his work, without his work on the cross right away, all humanity would be lost. That's you. That's I. That's our children, our wives, mama, daddy. Lost. Generations to come. Lost. Okay? Spiritually you know, deprived. Amen. Amen. So in Matthew, the book of Matthew, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to just re refer to it. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and 20, reminds us that we are laying up treasures. We are laying up treasures, it says, in heaven. Okay? All right? Besides, when we work for God, the retirement plan, by the way, the retirement plan is unbelievable. And, by the way, totally tax sheltered. Amen. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, again, a little levity here, but success, significance are not based on our job description. It's not based on how much money you make. It's based on, okay, a heart motivation, a heart motivation towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithfulness. Okay. Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24, verses 23 and 24 says, Whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul. And I'm going to read from the Amplified because I like the Amplified on this. From the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. Verse 24 says, Knowing with all certainty that, is, that, is, that it is from the Lord God and not from man that you will receive the inheritance which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving is the Lord Christ, the Messiah. Amen? Amen. That is Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. So remember, God says success is not based on results. It is based on faithfulness and obedience. Even as Christians, failure seems to haunt us. Can I stop on this street? <laughs> can yes, I stop can. here? Yes, you can. Even as those of us in the Word of God, failure seems to haunt us with discover, dis, dis, discouraging visions of how we could have done things better. I've done it. Evolved. Wish I could have, should have. I've done it. In the, Bible, in the Bible, we read the account of Jesus sharing the gospel with a rich young man. At the end of the conversation, the man walked away unconvinced. Did Jesus fail? No. He did what he was supposed to do. He gave the truth and he offered the way out. Some of us say he planted the seed. He offered the way out. But the man refused to accept it. Jesus faithfully did his part as we need to do our part. And that, and that is all the Lord asks for us to do. Okay, that's all he asks for us to do. Please remember that, look, at the end of life, he will not judge us, okay, on the reactions of those who we try to minister to. He's not going to judge us on their reactions. He's going to judge us on our faithfulness and obedience. Did we, as Mother Tracy said, did we try? Are you trying out there? Amen. Are you trying out there to share the gospel, brothers and sisters out there? Are you trying? Amen? Amen. Are you trying? So, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 2 through 4. This is the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Say amen when you get there. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Moreover, it is essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful proving himself worthy of trust. I'm reading from the Amplified. But as for me personally, 
it matters very little to me that I should be put on trial by you on this point, and that you or any other human tribunal should investigate and question and cross-question cross me. I do not even put myself on trial and judge myself. Verse 4 says, I am not conscious of anything against myself, and I feel blameless. But I am not vindicated and acquitted before God on that account. It is the Lord himself who examines and judges me. Look, in this letter to the Corinthians, our brother Paul admits that he is in the world to serve God. But he is not at all concerned about what others say about his service. Y'all ain't getting this. You're not getting this. He's telling us something here. Amen. That we need not be concerned when we're sharing the gospel with brothers and sisters out there. He just wants us, as Mother Teresa says, to try. Amen? Amen. So are you trying, brothers and sisters? Amen. God is looking for faithful and obedient servants to do the work of his here on this earth, as well as in our homes, as well as with our wives and, and our children. Amen? Amen. Let us remember God is always faithful. He does what he promises to do all the time. Moreover, God, you know, God is faithful. We all should dare to have the courage to trust him and his promises. Because he is faithful all the time, we should be trusting him all the time. Amen? Amen. So in the book of Hebrews, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and read this for the sake of time. Uh, I'm gonna go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. It says, the word of the Lord says, so let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. Amen. That's the word of the Lord right here. Amen. 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 So look, brothers and sisters, in truth, all of God's creation. I mean, if you, if you we just walk down the street, we can see, you know, creation all over the place. Amen. Amen. So, you know, and all of God's creation depends on his faithfulness. Animals. Okay, they begin their annual migrations. Periodic breeding cycles at certain times because of nature's law. His law, God's law in nature affirms it. Amen? Amen. Plants send seeds forth. You know, saplings start coming up through the ground. According to our Lord's faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Only us. Oh, we humans. <laughs> okay? Have a hard yes, time knowing whether or whether or not to exercise faith in our God. Sure, huh? Hmm. See, y'all ain't getting this today. I'm working hard. I'm, I'm re-energized. I've been <laughs> coming on vacation, Lord. So if we are full of faith and obedience, brothers and sisters, if we will believe God's word and expect him to fulfill his promises, that means we will actually live according to what we believe. Beautiful. Powerful. We should judge that our God who delivered his word is faithful all the time. For it says in Hebrews 11, 11, because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child even when she was long past for the age for it because she considered God who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. That's the word of the Lord right here. Amen. Amen. So therefore, brothers and sisters, we must commit ourselves. We must commit ourselves to our Heavenly Father in spite, in spite of the unfair, in spite of the sometimes evil, or even the unknowing circumstances in our lives. Amen? Amen. Tough to do. I get it. I live it. It, it. it hits on my home doorstep every day. I get it. But I'm telling you, the word of the Lord says that we are supposed to commit ourselves to this. We, brothers and sisters, we should, 
we should be we should do God's will the best we can because we trust our faithful creator to set all things right in our lives all things right set it right set it on a proper course in his time and in his way amen 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 this is the word of the Lord guys for it says in 1 Peter 4 and 19, and I'm going to read this one out of the American, the New American Standard Bible. Therefore, verse 19 says, Therefore, those of us who suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls to be to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Remember, we should find strength to be faithful and obedient to God because God himself is faithful in dealing with us. Amen? Amen. Please get this. Faithfulness and obedience is not optional. This is not something that we can choose to take on and off the shelf, brothers and sisters. Yes. When two people get married, they expect one another to remain faithful. Faithfulness is part of every marriage covenant. So also with God, faithfulness and obedience is not an option that we can choose. God expects it from us. We ex he expects us to be faithful to him. And remember, he seeks, he seeks men and women who will live in the way to be consistent in their faith and obedience and will carry it out every day of their life. Amen. In 1 Samuel, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, and I'm just going to read it, Tony, is that I will raise up for myself, it says. I will raise, I'm going to 1 Samuel. Chapter 2, verse 35, it's the word of the Lord says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and mind. And I will build him a sure house. It's a promise. And he shall walk before my anointed forever. This is the word of the Lord. This is the promise. Amen. So we show our God faithfulness by obeying him. His heart becomes our heart. His mind becomes our mind. His will becomes our will. We cannot be faithful to God if these things do not take place. We submit, we must submit to the obedience, to obedience in our hearts every day. To obedience in our minds every day. To obedience in our will every day. We must strive to come every day in alignment with the Lord God himself. Amen? Amen. 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 We all should know God. Again, God actively looks for faithfulness in his servants. Actively. It is one of our qualities in which he judges. It's one of the qualities in which he judges us on judgment day. Jesus tried to help us understand God's great interest in this. God's great interest in, in, in our trustworthiness and our faithfulness in him. In Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 21, I'm going to read from the New King James on this. It says, verse 21 says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over few things, and I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is the word of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. Everyone does not have the same opportunities. I get it. Nor do we all have the same abilities. I get it. But we all have something. We all have something. We all have, have the capacity to be faithful. Amen. Okay? We all have the capacity to be faithful, get this, in our own condition. Understand this, faithful in our own condition. We have that case. So there is no, uh, I can't do this. God gives us that capacity. Matthew, the book of Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. Read it when you get a chance, because I ain't got time to go there yet. Yet all people do not prove trust, trustworthy when tested. Jesus was in that scripture's reminding us of this very sobering fact. So brothers and sisters, are you, are 
Are you trustworthy when tested? Are you trustworthy when tested? Or are you looking to control things in your own lives which will which truly belong really to the one and only God? Amen? Amen. Amen. Which is it, brothers and sisters? Which is it? In everything, he says, in your life, in your person, God requires obedience and faithfulness. Amen? Amen. Brother Mingo, I think you... So, let me... Let me, let me okay. Don't get close. So, let us look to the example. I want to run through some examples real quick because we're getting close on time here. Okay. So, I got... Um, I wanted to give some examples as we did some biblical examples. I want to move now to some examples of faithfulness because, you know, I want to let this place be a place of encouragement to us, to those of us that may be struggling with our own faithfulness. I know that we all struggle with it from time yes, to time. We, Amen. we all struggle. Amen. So in this season, I wanted to remind uh, uh, those of you on the internet, those of us around the table, that, um, you know, we let's think about Joseph, son of Jacob. You know, he obeyed God even when faithfulness brought him great difficulty. Okay? He was sold as a slave. We know the story. Y'all got the story, right? While carrying out whose orders? His, his father's orders. Genesis 37, chapter 37, 13 and 29. If you don't believe me, read it, as I say. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I ain't got time to go there right now, but read it for yourself. Genesis th chapter 37, 13 and through 29. He was thrown into prison because he was faithful to his master. Okay, Potiphar. Genesis again. Genesis 39, verses 1 through 20. Joseph was always faithful to God. And in due time, he was set down at the right hand of Pharaoh. He was the number two. <laughs> number two rule of Egypt. Moses, our brother Moses, another example, was faithful in all God's house. Numbers chapter 12 and 7. You don't believe me? Go to it and read it, fellas. And to the ladies, you know, what does all of God's house mean? It means that he that he obediently did all that God asked him to do. Okay, Moses is Moses. You know, Moses was interesting. You know, you know, I, I love reading about him because he was carry, char characteristically, you know, he was he was he was very enthusiastic. I mean, that's the best word I could come up with. You know, for our God. You know, he was. You know, oh, maybe the term now is I, you know we use the term sold out for God. Okay, you know that's quite different from all the Israelites with him. If you think about it, oh yeah, you know he was kind of set aside by himself. Okay, you know, and you know because if you think about you know um, they weren't really enthusiastic. You know, one day they were, one day they were grumbling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, one day they were uh, disobedient and worshiping other idols. Mm -hmm. Amen. We know we all get familiar. this. Y'all yeah, get that story. You know, you know. But soon after, I mean, it's 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 funny when you think about all this stuff and how it's applicable in our lives. But we got to remember that you know we got to get the application here. Moses did not allow those people's attitude to deter his own obedience. He knew he needed to stand firm and be obedient, be, uh, be obedient to the word of God. Amen. So he didn't he didn't listen to that grumble. So brothers and sisters, are you letting others deter you from being obedient to the word of God? Are you in a place of being worn down by circumstance? Hmm. Is there an attitude that has you abdicating your responsibility? and requirement of obedience before the Lord God. Amen. Okay? Remember, Moses mm. was also imperfect like us. Yes. He was imperfect. And he too made his notable mistakes. We all do. I get it. Yet he consistently showed up, man. He showed up for work for every day. Every day he showed up. He was obedient to the God's will and, and always did his very best. 
is serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some of you may even recall recall that um, that even to others in the Bible, God. You know, when God came in the Bible to most folks, He came through dreams, right? Okay, but we got to think about this. He didn't do this. Okay, He came through dreams and visions. Let's say, right, to most folks, right? But he didn't do this with Moses. Now we gotta get this. Y'all, y'all gotta get this. He spoke clearly and directly to Moses. See, y'all, y'all ain't understanding this. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't getting this, brothers and sisters. Okay? God spoke clearly to him. And the reason why is because he cites it in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. And if you don't believe me, read it. Okay? That is because of his faithfulness that he spoke clearly and directly to Moses. Amen? Amen. You and I can learn. Y'all ain't understand that. Y'all ain't getting it. You and I, brothers and sisters, we can learn from this. It's applicable to our own lives. That if we obey, if we are faithful, no matter what their circumstance, no matter what the grumbling of our children, the grumbling of our wives, the disobedience of our children, disobedience of our wives, disobedience of our husbands, grumbling of our husbands. If we stand firm, we too can hear. Will, can hear the word of God himself. When our Heavenly Father speaks, he expects and deserves our faithfulness and our obedience. Amen? Amen. And let's move on. There's one more for you. Daniel, another example, was faithful to God, but he certainly, I mean, we all know this story, right? He certainly had reasons to, to, to you know, kind of bone out or, or dip and dive out, you know, because, you know, hey, man, it was all about his own personal safety. You know? mm -hmm. But we all know the story. You know, we, you know, we would say, oh, man, he might have had a, a reason to be disobedient in that case because I don't want to necessarily get eat up by, by lions either, right? Amen? You know, so, but look, but he didn't. You know, you got to think about this man. He was snatched from his own. He was moved as a prisoner to Babylon, okay? He was enrolled un unwillingly into a school, okay, in the king's court, and I don't think that was a kind of a school that none of us would want to go to because <laughs> if we fail the test, I'd hate to say what happened. Amen? Yeah. Amen? But God's servant, Daniel, his servant, was unmoved. Y'all ain't understanding this. Y'all ain't getting this. Come on now. All right? God honored him. Y'all know the story. They honored him. God honored him and exalted him for what? His faithfulness. He was so faithful in his assignments that when the enemy sought to overthrow him when he was king, they were unable to do so. Finally, they resorted to even using Daniel's worship of God as a weapon against him. <laughs> you don't believe me? Read Daniel, book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Read it for yourself if you don't believe it. For, for from Daniel, we learn that God honors faithfulness. faithfulness even in the most ungodly surroundings. Amen? Amen. So, I, you know, you know, I, I mean, I, 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 because where God has me, I have to listen to the grumbling of men and women around me. But, you know, I'm quick to point to this because there's a whole lot of folks that stood firm and faithful no matter what the circumstance they were in. Amen? Amen. So in closing, I, I, and, 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 and Lord, thank you, Lord, because we're on time here. In closing, I wanted to share something because in Max Lucado, I know Brother John's online and he loves Max Lucado, but in his book, When God Whispers Your Name, Okay, he tells of a story of, of John Eglin. And the reason why I picked up on this because of uh, the other, the second half of the story, because I love this guy and I was studying over this guy too. But John Eglin, who had never preached, the story goes as John Eglin, who had never preached a sermon in his life, okay, before the Sunday morning when it snowed and the pastor wasn't able to make it to church, okay? All right. In fact, he was the only deacon, the only deacon to show up. Now we all, you know, <laughs> so you know, Rest. here it is. Amen. So here he, <laughs> you know, he's drafted into duty, right? right? So here he is. He was not a preacher, but he was what? He was faithful, faithful 
And that meant on that particular Sunday morning, he was called. He was called to preach by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So God rewarded this man's faithfulness. And guess how he did it? At the end of his hesitant sermon, first time he preached, so you know he was you know, stopping and going and yeah, doing nervous. whatever we do when we're nervous. But one, one young man, okay, one young man invited God into his heart that day. One young man. And the story goes on to say that no one could have appreciated the significance of what had taken place that, that Sunday morning. No one. That young man who accepted Christ that so snowy Sunday morning, as the book says, was none other than Charles Hayden Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon himself, who I love his writings. You know, the man who had often been called the Prince of Preachers. Okay? God blessed Spurgeon's preaching, and when he was still less than 30 years old, he became the pastor of London's Metropolitan Tabernacle. His sermons were so powerful that although the building could, own, could hold, now this is a long time ago, brothers and sisters, although that building could hold 5,000 people, the crowds who came to hear him were so thick that they would line up outside trying to hear his sermons. That, that amazing life of faith all started Absolutely. on a cold Sunday morning with the faithfulness of one lowly deacon. That's yeah, powerful. That's, good. that's powerful. So I got a couple of quotes I want to share with you because our brother Andy Stanley, uh, Stanley, you know, we all know Charles Stanley in this ministry. You know, you know, you know, our brother Andy has a great quote. It says, there is a tendency to confuse success with the rewards of success if you are where God wants you, fulfilling the responsibilities he has given you you are successful. In fact, when that is the case, you are as successful as you will ever be. But success is not the mile marker. Success is not the raise, the recognition. Success is staying faithful to the process. You are, you are a success every day that you get up and show up for duty in Christ Jesus. Every day of faithfulness, you are as successful now as you will ever be the day you see any vision materialize, it says. If you measure your success by whatever or not, uh, by whether or not your vision has materialized, it says, you are a candidate for discouragement. Confusing success, it says, with the rewards of success is one of the primary reasons that people abandon their dreams. This is by Andy Stan Stanley. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. And I just want to close out because I brought this a couple weeks ago, and this is something the Lord brought to me. And this is kind of a personal mantra to remind me of my faithfulness. It is, you know, it, it, it says that I press ahead a little longer for what I seek is just ahead right around the corner I know it's there I know it's there for in my faith the Holy Spirit says so amen 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 this is the word of the Lord thank you Lord Jesus thank Christ you, God. all right so brother Tony you are the floor is open. Brothers on the end and sisters on the internet, the floor is open. Uh, we're moving into our um, uh, discussion period. Again, the tonight's teaching was entitled The True Measure of Our Faithfulness and Obedience. Thank you, Lord. Um, I just wanted to say to you, Brother Mingo, that was so powerful. I'm, I'm just sit here in, in, in a sense of awe to think of uh, I think what you uh, stated just a minute ago, or just a little while ago into your uh, powerful sermon, that the key is, even in your circumstance, it's important that you demonstrate your faithfulness. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that right there jumped out at me because yeah. everybody has a certain uh, a part of them that they feel that nobody else understands. Amen. Yeah. 
and God is coming right to you and saying, even in that circumstance that you're in, it's important to be faithful. Amen. And he asks of us to fulfill that part Amen. that we need to do is be faithful. And all too often you find yourself fulfilling a, 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 a well, you find yourself struggling to fulfill what you feel is gonna be your barometer for success. And quite often at the end of that, it's often said to myself, looking at it, those people in, in Hollywood, which a lot of people go by and measure themselves from, you know, they have fame, they have fortune, but all too often you see them falling short in spiritual faith. Mm -hmm. And they actually get to a point where sometimes they even lose it all. Yeah. Because their soul isn't fulfilled. That's right. That's right. So success comes in a way of you finding your spiritual success. Amen. Because that's eternal. Amen. And uh, praise God for that uh, powerful sermon. Amen. Because it, uh, it was walking on my street for sure. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Does anybody out on the internet have any uh, uh, any comments? Feel free to um, uh, you know send any comments via the chat line. Um, you know we're just blessed to be here and serving you tonight. But uh, um, Tony, would you like to share anything else? Or you know it's. Well, I, I, while again, we're waiting for, waiting for folks to, to come online. I'd just like to uh, reiterate to those o online, uh, there's always a point at some point where if you feel that your world is uh, not coming into fruition as you, as you see it, as you envision it, you know, that's telling you something. That's telling you, what is missing from my life? Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what is missing? Why, why do I feel empty despite me having these, these toys, these, uh, these reminders of what I consider and what the secular world considers success? Am I happy? Am I truly happy? And when you ask yourself that question, be honest with yourself, because we can rationalize everything. But when you think deep enough and when you ask yourself and you answer, well, no, then it's time to make a change and think about what does this what does this do for me if I'm gonna answer myself honestly? Where does it put my heart? Will it put your heart where it should be? And that's in God's hands. And once you find that, and once you read on that, and once you pray on that, there's a different kind of success, there's a different kind of peacefulness I feel that's priceless. Amen. 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 We did. Uh, we got a comment here from uh, Brother Keith out in uh, Las Vegas that uh, uh, he seconds your your uh, your comments, Tony. And he says, the, you know, praise God uh, for uh, for for God's word through you." And uh, he says uh, that he uh, himself has have felt that his uh, uh, obedience has wavered. Uh, but he's uh, he's always stood firm in his faith, he says, and he will continue uh, to push on. Praise uh, God. He says further, he says, as always, um, as you always say, it's not easy, but well worth the reward for eternal salvation. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you, Brother Keith. Thank you, Keith. Powerful words, Brother. Bless you. Bless you. And Keith is a living testament of, of what we see in, in God acting out. The, the man's heart is the size of this this country. Amen. He's Amen. always been a giver, way beyond. Sometimes I've I've, I've come to understand and, and uh, really appreciate uh, Keith's demonstration of love. It extends way beyond his physical being. It's been a it's been an experience for me to see how he extends himself to others, and he's been a, an inspiration for me. And I just want to thank you, Keith, for uh, showing me how it is when you extend love to others. And uh, despite what, what you may be going through, you still find a way to reach out for others. So God bless you for that, because you're setting an example. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I, you know, I personally, I, I, and I, I second that as well. Uh, 
you know, brother Keith and I, we speak practically every day, you mm -hmm. know, from one coast to the other. And, um, you know, I just, I, I just have to uh, second that. I'm just so very excited and proud to, uh, to be in a place where, where I can uh, observe what God is doing in his life and, and how God is using him, you know, Amen. to minister to uh, brothers on the West Coast and, you know, family members and, you know, how, how um, as you mentioned, his heart is so big and yes. how he cares and loves and, you know, how that is uh, played out. Uh, uh, through his obedience in, in the Lord and you know as you know we often we talked about the other day you know that um, you know you don't need to have uh, a PhD in biblical studies to share the word of God with someone you know um, you know what you need to do is share the love of God that's in your heart amen and uh, our brother Keith is a testament to that and, amen and, um, true testament you know, I've seen it I've seen it with my own eyes I felt it with my own you know he's been a he's been a he's He's been there for me, and, and he's he's built me up. So I, I felt those words, and those loving words come from him. And I've seen him work through, you know, his nephew. I've seen him work through brothers and, you know, uh, family members. So, you know, God has blessed him mightily, and, and it's just exciting for me to see uh, when God is using other people actively, Amen. you know. So I'm, I'm just excited. So, Brother Keith, uh, you know, I second it, man. I love you much. For all that you've done over the past, uh, I think it's been 25 years I've known him. So, but um, uh, Brother Keith says that uh, uh, he wanted us to know uh, how much uh, you've all grown in the Word of God, and it shows. And I appreciate everybody's, everyone's participation in our ministry. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, if we don't have any other comments, we have any other comments out there? I just wanted to make sure that we were. Uh, good stewards of time, uh, but um, yeah, I did want to you know see if there was any any other questions out there. But uh, if not, um, do you have a, brother Tony anything else you want to share? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so why don't we do this? Can you close us in prayer, brother? Absolutely. And um, um, and then we'll uh, we'll move forward. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Go ahead, Tony. Father God, we thank you for blessing us this evening with the word of the, from the word of God. Thank you. You have used uh, Reverend Mingo in this, in this indeed time of need to fulfill our spirits. Thank you. And re-energize us and nurture us in Thank the you. word. Thank you. Dear God, you have come into this home and sent, sent your angels in to revitalize the souls of those who are online. Thank you. And we hope that at some point we're speaking to someone who knows that there's an, a God right there for you. Yes. And all you need to do is reach out. Yes. And he will deliver. He has never failed. Right. We have failed him, but he has never failed us. That's right. And he is asking for you now. Thank you. He's endowed us and he's empowered us with free will. So you must step forward. You must step forward. And ask God to come into your life. Thank you. And once you do, he will bless you with ways you can't even fathom. Mm -hmm. So we ask that you reach out for him. And he in turn will always be there for you. Yes. We ask that you look over our families, our relatives, and our friends both near and far. We ask that you touch those who are sick and who are shut in. Yes. And we ask that you... Have forgiveness in your heart for those who have sinned against you and punished you and caused you any type of pain because this too is something that we need from a God. Thank you, Lord. And if God extends the mercy to us, then we in turn must extend the mercy to others. Yes, yes, Jesus. So in doing so, we in turn become a reflection of him. That's right, yes. And in Jesus' name, we ask these things. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, but uh, you know, as our brother Tony said in that prayer, that uh, um, you know, if there's anything uh, that was said in tonight's message that uh, the Word of God says pierces your your heart, um, you know, we invite you um, uh, to know the Lord. You know, as God, as, as our brother Tony says, you know, uh, we invite you to. 
um, to give yourself to Christ. Um, we 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 ask those of you that are you know on the fence to get down on your knees and, and, and just ask the Lord for, for the assistance and the help to move off of the fence. For those yes. of us that are looking for church homes, and I, I'd ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will that you uh, get on your knees before the Lord and ask for guidance in that area. Yes. You know, because God will provide that answer if you ask. Uh, we all need um, support. We all need um, uh, believers around us to help gird us up and pray for us. And, and we have a responsibility to be part of that and pray for others. Amen. Um, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I, I would encourage you right now in his name to... Uh, to call out to him, uh, to let the Lord know that uh, you believe and that, that you want to be a part of his kingdom, that uh, the only thing that's required is you just say that, that you know, Father God, I, I believe, and, and that, that you, you, you tell him that you believe that, um, that his son died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, and, and just repent before the Lord. Tell the Lord you, 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 you apologize for your sins. But all your sins have been washed away by, uh, by that monumental act of God's uh, grace and love for us with sending his only son to die on the cross for us. Amen. So just acknowledge that. And then tell him that you believe that his son was raised on the third day. Tell God that you believe that his son now is seated at his right hand. That is all that's required. That is all that's required. So brothers and sisters, we encourage you. If you need assistance, you need somebody to walk you through that process, we here at this ministry are here. You can reach us, go to our website at www.fishersofmenforjesus.org. Again, that's www.fishersofmenforjesus.org. And any of us here, will be more than blessed to walk you through the process. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, brother, won't we lead off in our closing scripture? Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. All right. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. All right. Let me go ahead and stop this here.